Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create this white furred rabbit. This is my first attempt at creating an animal with long white fur. It's not perfect, but there are some good techniques that I learned. There is a written version of this tutorial on my website. The blog has a free pattern and the reference photo that you can use. I will put a link to the blog in the description below. Well, let's get burning. The eye. Begin by lightly burning in the trace lines. Once the trace lines are burned in, then erase over them with a standard pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. I didn't record that step. Then start blocking in the darker areas on the eye. Use the shader you are most comfortable with. I am using Colwood's J shader. It's one of the smallest shaders that I have. I like to use it in areas where I don't have a lot of room and need a bit more precision. I am using this small shader to burn uniform strokes. Carefully burn around the reflected light on the iris. I am rotating the pin tip around to burn along the top edge of that reflection but it would be much easier to rotate the board. I was just being lazy. I am blocking in the dark skin or fur that is above the eye. There are numerous stray white hairs that overlap onto the area. I am carefully burning around those individual hairs. It would probably be helpful to use a white charcoal pencil and color over those hairs. This would make them stand out so that they would be easier to avoid. Plus, the charcoal will resist the heat of the pen tip, helping them stay white. I am also burning a series of thin tan lines that represent the shadows found in the fur. A green arrow is pointing to one of the shadows on the reference photo in the lower right corner. I have my burner set to get a medium to dark tan burn result. This lighter color makes it easier to fix mistakes during the blocking in phase. After the area is blocked in and everything looks good, then I'll reburn to darken things up to get them to their proper value. As I block in the eye area, I burn a lot of single lines using the razor edge of the shader. I don't use the zigzag burn stroke because there are too many stray wispy hairs that stick out in odd directions. It might be easier to use a writer pen tip instead of a shader for this. Don't be afraid to try it out. That's the only way you'll discover what works best for you. With the eye, I first burn circular motion to give it a base color. I am careful to avoid the reflected light because I want it to be the lightest spot on the eye. Along the outer edge of the eye, I am burning pull-away strokes. The stroke starts on the edge and is pulled towards the pupil. This creates gradient color from the edge of the eye to the pupil. If you compare my art with the reference photo, you will see that I added a spot of reflected light on the eye. I like to add reflected light because I think it helps give the eye more depth and realism. You can easily add reflected light to any eye by marking the spot where you want the reflected light to be and then avoid burning over that spot. I will mention that the eye and the fur around the eye is the most complex area on the rabbit. I highly recommend taking frequent breaks and working on simpler areas like the ears and the body. The eye and the fur immediately around the eye is blocked in. Now it is a matter of reburning over the area to build up the colors to their proper values. Also, I work on really defining the wispy hairs. This is done by burning around them. While I do this, I try to make the hairs very thin. I also strive to have the ends of each hair come to a tapered point. The heat setting on my burner remains the same. 
and I also used the same burn strokes during the reburning that I used for the blocking end stage. Even during the reburning process, I consult with the reference photo often. I am checking to see how dark the different areas on and around the eye need to be. I do a little burning, pause to consult with the reference photo, do a little more burning, pause, and so on. I just keep repeating that same process. When I work on the wispy hairs, I often tap the edge of the pen tip to create a very short, thin line. I alter the direction these lines are burned. The lines represent the shadows between the overlapping wispy hairs. Often, the wispy hairs grow in different directions, so that's why I vary the direction I've burned the short lines. Most of the fur immediately around the eye is in shadows. After I have gotten the fur defined and I'm happy with how it looks, then I burn over the area using the flat of the shader. This is just to slightly darken all of the fur immediately around the eye. The very last thing I do is use the tip of a sharp knife to restore wispy hairs I accidentally burned over. Use a very gentle pressure when doing this because it is easy to gouge the wood. If you are burning on plywood, a heavy hand pressure can cause little pieces of the wood to chip out. So it's important to go slow and use a light hand pressure when scraping. The face. We are going to start the face by lightly blocking in the features. I am starting with the dark markings by the nose. I am burning a series of thin, dark tan to light brown lines using the edge of the shader. The lines are burned in the direction that the fur is growing. I do use zigzag strokes on the short dark fur above the nose. The zigzags are also burned in the direction that the fur is growing. In addition to burning the lines in the fur growth direction, you also need to adjust the length of the lines to match the length of the fur. For example, the fur above the nose and along the corner of the eye is very short, so the burn lines need to be short. The fur along the outer edge of the mouth is medium in length, so increase your burn stroke length. The fur on the cheek and chin is even longer. Check with the reference photo often to determine how long the burn stroke should be. I am using Colwood's J shader, and my burner is set to produce a medium to dark tan burn result. I don't use a high heat setting because I tend to alternate between working on the white and dark fur. Personal experience has shown I tend to forget to turn the heat down when I switch to the white fur. So for me, it is much safer to set the heat and forget about it. This method does require a lot more reburning, but I do think that it provides the most control over the final color. With the short dark fur above the nose, I am burning either zigzag strokes or single lines using the razor edge of the shader. Sometimes I just tap the pin tip on the board to produce very short lines. By tapping, I mean I press the pin tip to the board and hold it in place for the smallest fraction of a second, and then I lift the pin tip up and away from the board. I do not move the pin tip while it is in contact with the board. With the fur on the chin, I am burning curved tan lines. I have more of the metal in contact with the board, so the lines are thicker. I burn along the upper edge of the chin, and then I burn along the bottom edge. This makes the upper and lower edges of this fur darker than the center, and that makes the fur look curved. As you can see, I tend to bounce around the artwork. My approach to the fur changes depending on the length of the fur. With short fur, I tend to use the razor edge of the shader and burn zigzags, single lines, 
or just tap the pin tip to the board. With long fur, I have more metal in contact with the board, so I get a wider burn stroke. Not only are the burn strokes wider, but they are much longer, and they tend to have a curve to them. By altering my hand speed, I get different colored burn strokes, and this creates the impression of that long fur. Regardless of how long the fur is, it is very important to burn it in the direction the fur is growing. For example, the fur on the cheek is mostly vertical in direction, so don't burn horizontally in this area. It wouldn't look right. Animals that are predominantly white in color need a darker background so that they will stand out. I'm starting the background along the bottom edge of the fur. I am burning single lines and some zigzags on the background. These burn strokes overlap onto the fur. I vary how much the burn strokes overlap onto the fur. This breaks up the solid line and creates stray hairs that stick out here and there, giving the edge of the fur a more realistic look. As you work on the white fur, don't be afraid to give it some color. One mistake I often see with white fur is that it is left largely unburned or it is too light in color. Quite truthfully, my rendition of this rabbit really needed more color. If you look at the reference photo, there is a line found along the top of the head. To the left of the line, I am going to consider that as part of the ears, and I will cover that section in the next chapter. Now that the face is blocked in, it is time to reburn over it to darken it to its final value. For the reburning, I use the same burn strokes and techniques that I did during the blocking in phase. I purposely deviated from the reference photo when I left the ends of some of the dark fur patches pale. A green circle is marking a spot on my artwork where I did this. Look closely and you can see where the outer edges of the lower patch are a couple of shades lighter in color. This color difference helps this lower patch stand out against the dark fur behind it. Now you might be asking if this is a necessary thing to do. No, it's not. Instead, it's just me adding subtle details that, quite truthfully, I doubt anybody really notices. At this point, all I am doing is reburning over the face to darken it up. I am really concentrating on the black fur in my artwork because that needs a lot more color. I created this rabbit back in 2019, and looking at it now, I can see that I really should have darkened up the white fur a lot more than I did. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the Compare and Fix chapter. The Ears Begin by burning over the trace lines. Anytime I am working on fur, I like to use a shader to burn in the trace lines because it creates the same type of line that I'll be using when I create the fur texture. After the trace lines are burned in, rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. I didn't record that step. Next, block in the ears, including the shadows on the body below the ears. A red arrow is pointing to one of the shadows. Because the fur on the body is white in color, the shadows cast by the ear are tan in color. My burner is set to get a medium to dark tan burn result. I am mostly burning single lines. The lines vary in width depending on the angle I'm holding the pin tip at. Along the side of the ear, circled in green, I use the flat of the shader to quickly get color on the area. During the blocking in phase, it is important to start creating the appropriate color relationships. An example of this would be the cast shadows under the ears. Those shadows should be darker than the adjacent white fur, but much lighter in color than the black ears. 
I rotated the board to burn along the bottom edge of the ears. This direction allows me to easily keep my pin tip in optimal position so that the edges of the ears are crisp and clean. I am burning short pull away strokes along the edge of the ear. The stroke starts on the edge and is pulled towards the face. Stop the stroke a short distance after starting it. The burn strokes provide a bit of gradient color along the edge. I also burn some really short pull away strokes along the bottom of the fold on the ear. A red arrow is pointing to the fold. These really short burn strokes create very dark color with a slight gradient to them. As you would burn, I highly recommend that you occasionally rotate the board. Make sure you also rotate your reference photo to match the board orientation. When the artwork is rotated, it doesn't look as familiar to your eyes and brain. This allows you to see details like soft shadows and subtle color changes easier than you normally would. Since I videotape my work, I try to keep the rotations to a minimum because the sudden change in video direction could be uncomfortable to watch. If you're not videotaping your work, then rotate away. I am burning a series of thin lines on the lower portion of the ear. The lines are burned towards the slight highlight on the ear. A red arrow is pointing to the highlight. The lines burned to the right of this highlight are much longer in length than those that are burned to the left of it. I vary the width of the lines by how much metal I have in contact with the wood. This is controlled by the angle that I hold the pin tip at. The steeper the angle is, the less metal is in contact with the wood, and the thinner the line will be. With the top of the ear, I am burning either single lines or short zigzag strokes. All of the lines that are being burned on the ears serve two purposes. First, the lines darken the ear. And second, the lines give the ear texture. Near the base of the ear, there are some white wispy hairs that overlap onto it. I treat these wispy hairs just like I did with the ones around the eye. Basically, I'm doing my best to avoid burning over the hairs. I burn around the hairs. I do want to remind you that this process can be easier if you draw over the hairs with a white charcoal pencil. The white charcoal makes it easier to see the hairs so you can avoid them better. Plus, the charcoal can resist the heat of the pen tip and that will help the hair stay white. It won't block it completely, so you still need to avoid burning over the charcoal. Hopefully you notice that I've re-burned over the ears several times. Each time the ears get a little darker and the features get further defined. I use the same burn methods during each reburn, and I consult with the reference photo often. I removed the numerous pauses from the video because if I didn't, the video would be longer by a third, if not more. It can be difficult to completely avoid burning over the wispy hairs. To restore them, I use the tip of a sharp knife and gently scrape them back into existence. I cannot emphasize enough the need to use a very light hand pressure when doing this. The goal is to create and restore wispy hairs, and not create deep gouges in the wood. The final thing I did was darken up the white fur a bit more. I really should have made it even darker, but this was my first attempt with white fur. I made mistakes, but I learned a lot from this project. The Body and Ground Begin by burning in the shadows on the body. For this, I am using the flat of the shader to get wide burn strokes. The strokes are burned in the direction that the fur grows. Vary the color of the burn strokes to create the impression of hair, fairly large locks of hair at that. The fur on the body is not all the same length. It has sections. Section is not the best term, but it's all that I could think of. 
a green circle encompasses one of the sections that I am referring to. To create a section, burn some short strokes above it. Start the stroke on the shadowed area above the section and pull it down towards the bottom of the rabbit. Bury your stopping point. Then burn strokes along the bottom of the section. These strokes start below the section and get pulled up towards the top of the rabbit. Vary where you start each stroke, where you end each stroke, and how dark the strokes are. The fur on the body does not need a lot of fine detail. For example, you do not want the level of detail that the fur around the eye has on the body. I have mentioned several times in this video that I didn't burn the fur to a dark enough color. I should have made all of the fur on the body a medium tan color and darker. The top of the back should have been medium tan in color and the sides of the body a couple shades darker. The darker shadows a couple of shades darker than that. I will cover this a little bit more in the Compare and Fix chapter. The jagged hairline was created using the same techniques that were used on the fur along the bottom of the face. You burn lines that start below the fur. Extend the line up into the fur. Vary the width, color, and length of the lines. Also, vary the direction the lines are burned. Then I re-burn over the area to further define the hairs. During this step, I am mostly burning very thin lines using the razor edge of the shader. These ultra-thin lines are used to break up the fur even more, so the wispy hairs become finer or thinner in nature. I burn these lines in both directions on the fur. This means some start in the fur and end at the bottom of the fur, or close to it, and others start at the bottom and end up somewhere in the fur. Another thing I work on is making sure that there is variety on where the locks of fur end. I didn't want a straight line that all of the fur stopped at. Instead, make some sections a touch longer and others a bit shorter. This variety will add realism to the artwork. Looking at my artwork two years after I originally burned it, I think I created too many wispy hairs along the bottom of the rabbit. I should have left larger locks without any or very little in the way of wispy hairs on them. When I work on the fur on the body, I like to work small areas at a time. I burn in the fur on the side, and then I create the jagged hairline along the bottom of the fur. Then I burn in the ground to a uniform dark color. You may prefer to get the fur all done and then create the wispy hairs. The order that the area is burned in really doesn't matter. You'll end up with the same basic results. This section of video is a bit wonky. My camera was having problems focusing. I chopped out the sections that were really bad because it was very uncomfortable to watch. The focus level kept going in and out, and most of the time it was so blurry you couldn't see what was going on. Pay attention to the area marked by the red arrow. I am creating a lock of fur by burning around it. This makes the lock of fur lighter in color and helps it stand out from the surrounding fur. All of the locks of fur on the rabbit were created using this method. You can make the lock smaller by burning around it to decrease its size. Periodically, I would use a knife to scrape in some wispy hairs. I did this to create hairs that were oriented in a different direction than the adjacent fur. This is not a necessary step. In fact, I don't think it improves the look of the fur, so I don't recommend doing it. At this point, the body and ground are blocked in. Now it is a matter of reburning over them to darken and fine tune the details. Like all of the reburning, I used the same techniques that I used to block in the area. I didn't introduce any new burn strokes or techniques. Unfortunately for me, 
I spent the majority of my time creating wispy hairs. I think that the fur looked much better before I did this, so this is another thing I don't recommend you do. Since I consider the excessive wispy hairs I created on my artwork a waste of your time, I'm not going to show any more of that. Instead, I will show what I think should be done, and that is darkening up the fur on the body. For this, I am burning an assortment of lines that follow the direction the fur grows in. I vary the width of the lines, but I don't use the razor edge of the shader because I don't want really thin lines. Instead, I want fatter lines or thicker lines to create locks of fur. Background and Wispy Hairs The bottom of the fur has a jagged edge. Since it is not a smooth solid line, I burn thin lines that start on the background and extend a short distance into the fur. Once the background next to the fur is done, then I use the flat of the shader to fill in the rest of the background with color. The color does not need to be uniform, so you can use any burn stroke you like. I'm using uniform strokes, circular motion, and some zigzags. I wasn't joking when I said you can use any burn stroke. Rotate the board as needed while you work your way around the rabbit. Some directions will be much easier to burn along the edge of the rabbit than others. Here's how the background looked once I was done. I hated it. The rabbit isn't very exciting, and the background was even worse. To fix this, I decided to put a bubble background on. I started out by drawing circles onto the background with a pencil. Then I used a large ball pen tip and started burning in the circles. I burn each circle individually, and I made each one slightly different in color. Why did I decide to use a ball pin tip? I have no idea. It is not a pin tip I use often. My guess is that I was testing it out to see how well it would work for this application. Looking at the video, I would say it worked fairly well but I already know that I switched back to a shader pin tip, and that is probably because I'm not very comfortable using the ball tips. Plus, I think the shader works better on the larger circles. Now I am using a shader pin tip. I do think this is mostly a personal preference based on my comfort levels. I will say that the shader gets the circles burned in quicker because of its larger size. If you would prefer to use a ball pin tip or some other pin tip, by all means, please do so. I continue to burn in each circle individually. In areas where two circles overlap, I just pick one to be the background circle. I always make the background circle incomplete. Or to put it another way, you don't see all of the background circle. Also, I burn the background circle to a darker color. I am mostly using circular motion as my burn stroke, but I also use some uniform strokes. Now keep in mind that this is just how I am doing things. That doesn't mean it's the only way or even the best way. I just explain it and you can choose if you want to do the same. You may find another process that works better for you. After the circles are burned in, rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Then, if needed, touch up the circles to darken them, soften edges, define edges, or whatever you think needs to be done. Here's how the background looked after I was done. To me, this looks a lot better than the other background, but again, this is a personal preference. The last thing I did was use the tip of a knife to create wispy hairs sticking out from the top of the body. This is done by scraping away the burn marks on the background. As always, it is important to use a gentle hand pressure when scraping because you do not want to create deep gouges into the wood. Compare and Fix Here's how my artwork looks compared to the reference photo. 
the fur on my artwork is a lot smoother. And part of the reason for that is when I created this, I lacked the skills to do a better job and I was being kind of lazy. Now one thing I highly recommend you doing is making the rabbit darker. If you look at this Photoshop image, I darkened up all of the body. Just that little bit of color helps shift the focus onto the face. Here's a comparison with the artwork how it really is and my Photoshopped image. And another thing I did wrong with this artwork was create way too many wispy hairs along the bottom of the fur. Here's a photoshopped image showing you how it could look with fewer wispy hairs and more clumps of fur. Keep in mind, I'm not very good with Photoshop. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found the information helpful. As I said before, there is a written tutorial on my website. Pyography Made Easy, and that tutorial has a free pattern and the reference photo. I will put a link to that in the description below. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.